Can I ask that those who have kids that can cry should be taken to the foyer so that they remain in the foyer until this service is over. Head usher, act on my words, please. Wow. Thank God for your lives. What an amazing time we are living in. I'm sure you have been all current with the news. Isn't it? Yes, sir. And I'm sure that um, if you were here since January this year, you begin to say, wow, isn't it? Yes, Everything God told us in this house are happening to letter before the year runs to an end. But you know, in the prophecy God gave us, I want to remind you there are some things God spoke about you. Really, I will say this, that um, during this week, while they were going to do the vote of confidence or vote of no confidence intended, I was with my builder, and my builder was discussing with me in the morning, and I was telling him how he must serve the Lord. Because this nation is a Christian nation by heritage. Amen. And this nation cannot prosper unless they go back to the God of their father. So I told her, him how God had revealed to Rosa what Theresa May is going through now, what's the party, the division between the conservative and the, and the um, labor, and how a new movement emerged eventually. And that movement had, had, doesn't have a head. And I told him that it's a 22nd of a month, but I could not see the very month. But I saw the 22nd date of a month. And this nation was like a sheep without shepherd. And when I was told that um, when we read, when we, um, the prime minister moved the um, decision regards the voting regards uh, her proposal to 21st of January, I said, oh my, prophecy is very interesting. Certainly on the 21st of January next year, it is glaring that they will vote her down. And I think prophetically 22nd of January will be a day that that prophecy will really hit this country. But when I was speaking to my, my, my builder, the Holy Spirit spoke to me. He said, by the way, the election, that the, the voting they're going to vote tonight of no confidence, he said that, do you know that Theresa May will win by 200 votes? And I said, hold it. I said, Dave, I just heard the Lord spoke to me now. He said, what? <laughs> <laughs> I said, tonight, in the, in, the, in the decision that will be made, the vote that will be made in the parliament, the prime minister will win by 200 votes. He said, oh, that's interesting. I said, yes, because it's, her time has not come. I said, and I said, we will pray for her. So then the Holy Spirit told me to write to the prime minister, and I did. Told her how much we loved her. And told her that this church had been praying for her along since she came in. And that what she's going through at this time, we support her and told her that by the way the decision today will be by 200 votes to her and that she should calm herself down she's going to win and I told her I promised that we will continue to pray for her and uplift her which we are doing in this church but anyhow I also said to her that um, I don't know if I may be of any help at this time that my dissertation in my LLM was on Brexit. And if there is need be, I'll be available to serve. But she should be very encouraged that she, no one is removing her tonight. And I was very happy that I wrote that to her straight away before the vote. And I was very happy that the Holy Spirit, of course, when the Holy Spirit speaks, is precise and specific. And when the Holy Spirit speaks, it can be changed. And when they got in there, though there's a lot of confusion about it, she won by 200 votes exactly. Yeah. You know why I'm saying this to you? 
I'm saying it's because of a number of things. <clears throat> I want to talk about your new identity in Christ. Amen. Your new identity in Christ. Briefly, I will say to you that, you remember that, um, well, last Sunday I was with you in this church. Yeah, you, you are laughing now. I was with you in this church, not in the spirit. I heard all the message that was preached. Uh, you were taught about dominion, isn't it? And Pastor Ben was jiving like apostle, isn't it? He was walking about up and climbing the steps and running up and down. Uh, I said the spirit of apostle Williams has come upon Pastor Ben. <laughs> And then, you know, when I was looking at the ministration, the Lord reminded me that I told you that I've given the cap that I give to you to everyone to wear. And he said, I've given the same shoe I've given you to everyone to wear. You remember God said that on the first day yes, of this month. Yes, and on the second day when I was questioning how can one cap fit every head, the Lord said, their mindset. He said, tell them to adopt your mindset. And then they will operate exactly like you. There will be no difference. And when I saw, when I had the new cross yes, uh, last Sunday and I had this, I said, yes, the spirit of Elijah is upon Elisha. <laughs> I will talk to you more about that. <clears throat> but tonight I want to talk about your identity. Your identity. Your identity is formed by who you are and what you are. We we'll remember that from the youth convention, isn't it? Come on now, church, let's speak. Your identity is formed by who you are and what you are. <clears throat> Some of you, you will recognize with me, everybody, right, that your name is the first identity you have. Alfred Williams means Alfred, the son of Williams, isn't it? Okay? Another identity that you adopt, that is who I am. He is a man. That is who I am. But after a while, they say, Alfred the Land Surveyor. That is what I am. So, who you are is by virtue of either your creation or your adoption which has nothing to do with your actions. Who you are is not informed by your contribution or actions, but what you are is a function of what you have done. If they say Alfred the murderer because he killed, it changes the identity of Alfred. Alfred the apostle because of the manifestation that they have seen. And that changes the identity of Alfred the murderer to Alfred the minister. So what you are is informed by who you are. Uh, your identity, rather, is informed by who you are and what you are. Now, if you, do, if you want to know more about that, you look at the, um, the youth convention this year. I went into details of that. But today, I want to help you understand that in application to salvation. You will agree with me that when you see my own son, he looks like me. Yes, you see my daughter, she's a woman, but she looks like me. Now, if you see, if I look at you and I see your dad, I can say, that's your dad, because you have resemblance, physical outward appearance. But let me help you understand this. My children, therefore, that grew with me will think like me, correct? So as they grow with me, they adopt some of my intellects. The way I do things, the way I say things, the same thing with their mother. If I was a dirty man, my sons would be dirty by default. If I was a neat person, my children would be neat by default. Now, 
same thing with the spiritual. You need to understand this very, very well. Now, if I have children, physically they look like me, automatically anybody who meets them have a particular standard he expects from them because of me. You wouldn't expect a person born in my house to be a failure academically. It's not possible. You can, you can because you know the kind of person I am. You wouldn't expect somebody who said that I'm the son or I'm the daughter of Apostle Williams and the person is timid. You can't think about that. You can't imagine somebody who is um, born by me to uh, be different to the kind of person I am. If there is, then there must be a problem. But let me say this. If a child is born by me and that child is taken away from me and the child was raised somewhere else, then he cannot be like me. Correct? Because the environment where that child grows is what will inform the behavior. Though physically it looks like me, he cannot function like me, he cannot behave like me, he cannot act like me. So are you. 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, If a man be in Christ Jesus, he's what? A new creation. Yes? So since you got born again, you were recreated. That's the scripture. And he went further to say, all things have passed away. All things have become new. There is quite a big volume in that. I've taught you a lot about that when I was talking about the genetics of God and man. Now, but for, to, for today, I want to look at identity. Who you are and what you are. That's what forms your identity. Therefore, if that scripture says, when you are in Christ Jesus, you are a new creation, and it says that all things have passed away, it's talking about your identity. Who you are has changed, and what you are have to change. Who you are before salvation is that you are just a brute going to hell. You are not. But when we get saved, we become children of God. John chapter 1, verse 12. Chapter 4 of Acts, verse 12 says, Salvation is found in no one else, neither is there any name under heaven by it which man shall be saved. So when we get born again through Jesus Christ only, our identity has changed. We have a new identity in Christ. But understand, your identity is composed, is composed of who you are and what you are. Who you are now is, I am a son of God. John chapter 1, if we read verse 12, and we'll take it to verse 14. Yet to all who received him, to those who believe in his name, he gave the right to become what? children of God. So, once you are born again, you become a child of God. If you are not born again, you are not a Christian. There is no such a thing as born again Christian. It is faf. It's what we call faf. Really, it's even worse than faf. To claim to be a born again Christian, it is total ignorance. You can't say, I'm a human of human. You are either a human being or you are not. To be a Christian, you must accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And this scripture tells me, to all who receive him, okay, those who believe in his name, he says, God gave them the right to become what? Children of God. So and that is being born again. Okay, so, who you are changes instantly. You are called child of God. But what you are, understand, has to do with what you do. Who you are is by inheritance or by adoption. But what you are is a function of what you do. But then a child must be who the father is and also must be what the father is. Isn't it? Come on now, church. I, don't, I hope I'm speaking plain English. This is the financial headquarters of Christ with Tabernacle, isn't it? Yes, sir. Uh, look at you. I think I will call for a coffee break. 
I want to show you something in a very short time that will shape your life forever. Good. So, who you are cannot change. You are a child of God. Unless if you undo yourself. If somebody is my child, he's my child, unless he goes to say, from today, today I saw by affidavit I'm no more a child of this family, and he can adopt any name he wants. So you are the only one who can undo your salvation, no other person. Satan cannot. Angels cannot. People cannot. Are we together now? Yes, sir. So therefore, that scripture says, your who changes. If you look at the book of Romans chapter 8, therefore, let's see from verse, write the scriptures down and what I'm telling you. Romans chapter 8, let's see from verse 28. Shall we read it together, please? Do you like that? Yes. Say, everything is working for good for me. Everything is working for good for me. Right, read the next verse. Shall we together, please? Come on, that, 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 stop, stop, stop there, stop there. God for new, also predestined to be conformed to what? That, that, I think that is talking about what she will become or what will become of you. The first one talks about who you are, you are a child of God. But the second one is talking about what will become of you. So, from salvation to maturity, a Christian goes through what is called projection. I was telling them in New Cross now to help you understand what projection really means. You know, this world that you are in, it looks like a plane. You drive from your home here like a flat ground. You are driving, isn't it? You go to Wales, it seems you are driving flat, but you go up hill and down, stuff like that. But when you travel to this space, the farther you go in the space, at the beginning, the whole world will look like a plain ground. But if you go higher height, you begin to see the curvature, that the world is curved, is curved, is curved. You are able to see only United Kingdom. When you go further, you can see UK, you can see Paris, and you find out that UK is on a ball here, and Paris is along the ball here. And you can see probably Africa is even further on the ball here when you go up. Now, but when we, comp when, when we, when we calculate your location on Earth, we use length, hmm? and breath, correct? Now, there's something, you know, that have, been, that, that have been done by some of us which enables you to translate that spheroid stuff into length and breath. It's called conformal projection. Those of you who are in the mathematics or if you are a severe before, you understand what I'm saying better. How can we calculate distance from England to Africa or to South Africa, knowing that it is a curve, and yet we represent it on a flat map. What it, it goes through mathematically is called conformal projection. We will look at the dimension of the world as a spheroid, okay? But we want to conform the spheroid into a plane. So we will have to do some interpolation through what is called an ellipsoid. Don't worry about the jargon I'm saying. <clears throat> through an ellipsoid. But for those who are mathematical, or anybody who's into Judaism, so we must understand what I'm saying better. They will understand it easy. And I will show you something now. So we have to recompute, calculating some errors and taking out some errors, condition, atmospheric condition, affected distance and all manner altitude and stuff. And we do all those corrections and apply it to our... our uh, you know, spheroidal dimension from London to South Africa, then you can have your GPS, correct? That's what we do. So a lot of mathematical computation goes behind the button. 
before you can now have your GPS behaving as if you are going through straight plain road. So is what the scripture is saying. That those who are predestined for salvation, God ordained them to be conformed. The major problem of believers is the process of conformality. Many people are under wrong instructors. And if your instructor does not have the knowledge of how to conform you to God, you remain where you are till death. I think Pastor Ben was speaking about something like that from when he quoted from the book of Revelations last Sunday. So, therefore, what determines the ability of a Christian all his lifetime is the amount of conformity that he is able to attain from salvation into Christ. Are we getting me? Yes. Let me help you for that. Now, do you believe that everyone born again has the Holy Spirit inside them? Yes. You believe that? Yes. Come on now. Yes. Why are you looking at me like that? Do you believe that you have Holy Ghost? Yes. Is there anybody here who believes he has devil ghost? <laughs> Anyone born of God have the Holy Spirit in them, isn't it? Yes, sir. All right, let me, I will take you to something about the Holy Spirit. But we must understand this first. So therefore, from salvation, which is who you are, son of God, into maturity as a Christian, which is what you are, there is a procedure that must be followed. Now, let me help you know this too. Go to Colossians chapter 1, verse 13. And we're going to look at that in two versions of the scripture. Anything I teach you, you have the right to question me. All right? It says here, for he has what? Shall we read it together, church, please? Yes. So I can connect that with the dominion that the pastor was teaching you last week. How to take your dominion. I anointed your feet for dominion, isn't it? Yes. Now, he spoke about how you really take the dominion. And I listened to everything he said. You may have dominion, but you may live like a slave in your domain. There is an error I have seen on that heavens. Don't go there, uh, my, because I know that my projector pull out very fast in the Bible. <laughs> there is an evil I've seen under the heaven, an error that proceeds from a ruler. Ecclesiastes 10, Ecclesiastes 5.10, isn't it? Yes, sir. Dr. Digny, or who is there, Elder King, go there and come back. <laughs> Ecclesiastes No, it's 10-5. Ten, 10-5, five. Ten, five, and then we look at 10-10. Ten, ten. There is an evil I have seen under the sun, isn't it? The sort of error that arises from... I love the NIV because of that word arises from. <laughs> Hallelujah. What is this evil... And what is this error that emanates from a ruler? Let's read the next verse. Full are both of many high positions, where the rich occupy the low ones. Read it again. So it's an error. In your country, if those who are ruling you are not born again, it's your error. In your business, if people who, are, who control that business are not born again. It's your error. The Bible says fools. A foolish man is, a, is what the Bible calls a man that says in his heart, there's no God. It's a foolish man says in his heart, there's no God. So when, God, when the Bible calls a man foolish, it's not an insult. It's a descriptive word of the actual function arising from the behavior of that person. It says a foolish man says... There is no God. Now, somebody who says there is no God, why should he be in high places? Which God is the one who created the high place? 
God said it's an error that God has no part in but you. <laughs> Hallelujah, somebody. That he has set the high places, rules, you know, seat of authority, dominion, and God expects Christians to occupy it. But if a Christian did not occupy it, and an ungodly person occupies it, God said it's an error. And that evil is an error that arises from the ruler. I, I, it, it, it's, almost, it's almost, this is almost taking away my message. You know, God spoke a lot about what Christians need to do to be successful. It's not prayer. It's not prayer. God gave you rules to do to be successful. Correct? It's not by fasting and prayer you are successful. You can fast and pray all these years. You cannot by that become Prime Minister of England. You cannot become a medical doctor, a lawyer, or an engineer by fasting and praying and becoming a chartered accountant. You just wake up from your fasting and you're a chartered accountant. Does that happen in any country? Hello, somebody. You speak in tongues and then you become, uh, you know, a carpenter. That's speaking in tongues. You don't, you, don't, you don't get those things done by that. To be those things, you have to obey the rule of diligence. Turn your heart to gain an understanding and be diligent in seeking the understanding. You get it? Hello, somebody. You cannot pray peace into your heart, into your life. No, you have to do the work of peace. Oh, Lord, let there be peace in my home. No, God won't do that. It's you who make peace. The Bible says that, be, it says in the book of Hebrew, uh, I, I think it's uh, uh, 11. It, it, says, it says that, um, be at peace with all men and be holy. Without holiness, no man shall see God. But he said, be at peace. So God don't make the peace for you. You be at peace. If I fight you, it's my decision. If I decided to love you, it's my decision. Hello, somebody. Oh, let there be peace between me and uh, brother, brother. No, I have to go and do the work of peace. That's what the Bible says. Why prayer has its position, and I will help you understand that in this meeting. Diligence can never replicate prayer. You see a man diligent in all his ways, the Bible says he will sit with kings. Isn't it? Come on now. <laughs> Good. So, this error, this evil of misplaced of priority is an error that came from the ruler. Go back to my Colossians. Say to somebody, you shall know the truth. You shall know the truth. And the truth shall set you free. So it says in that Colossians 1.13, He has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of his son. Whom he loves. Now, let me put this in your mind. He has rescued us from the dominion of darkness because that's what God is speaking about here now, isn't it? So a Christian cannot be dominated by the devil. Somebody say amen. amen. You have been taught severally over the past few weeks. A Christian can never be ruled by Satan. Impossible. A Christian cannot be, of, uh, Satan cannot destroy you with voodoo. What Satan do to people out there and he destroyed them, he, may, he messed them up. If you're a Christian, you cannot. It cannot, have, it cannot have effect on you. I told you, to the place you are by, they put voodoo in the ground or dedicate a place as a shrine to the devil. You don't need to pray to enter there. You only need to step your foot on it. I taught you and I did it across the continents of the globe and it is so are we together now Jesus when he saved you he said if a man be in Christ you are a new creation the old has come, gone all things have become new then he says the process of it is that Jesus came rescued you and I from the dominion of darkness and then he did what there brought us now go to King James Version for that part, brought. The word brought. What did he say? And had translated us into the kingdom. So while the first part of, of King James here, I will decide to rely on the interpretation of NIV. And the second part of King James, I will adopt to complete my illustration. In the NIV it says, 
Jesus rescued us on dominion that is actual. He rescued you and I from the powers of Satan. He says, all powers in heaven and earth have been given unto me. Therefore, what? Go. Okay? He didn't take the power he gave the devil because the gift and calling is without repentance. But in Luke chapter 10, verse 18, don't go there. He says, I have given you power over all the powers of who? Of who? Of the enemy. So when you are born again, Jesus gives you power over all the powers of the enemy. So that you have a superior power, his power has been downgraded under your power. When the people in the world can say, the devil made me do this, the devil made me do that, the devil can't make you do something because somebody lives in you now. Somebody say amen. Amen. Therefore, for this power to be yours, Jesus rescued you. There's a storm. Jesus came to the world and stormed this world, and he laid this blood down as, a bar- as, a, as the filter, barrier. You pass through it, you are delivered from the powers of death, from dominion of darkness. But he says, now, translated us into the kingdom, and that is where the part of beating and conformer projection comes into play. You who was flesh and blood before, and I, who would die and go to hell, now we die, we become saints of the living God. Hallelujah, somebody. You who and I, who cannot know our nose before. You can't tell me tomorrow before. You can't understand how your life is going or where your life shall go. Now we become someone who can tell about tomorrow. We can prophesy about what will happen. Isn't it, somebody? We can talk about what natural mind cannot understand or conceive. And you can, you can, and people will be saying that you, you, you are, in England, they will say you are psychic. Instead of them to admit that you are god ick Amen. What do you mean by psychic? We are godic. Hallelujah, somebody. Because the spirit of the Most High lives in mortal man now. You who before people are messing you up, you are afraid of darkness, you are afraid of color, you are afraid of water, and all manners of stuff. Once you are born again, you are a new creation because he rescued you from the dominion of darkness, from all those intimidating spirits. And translated you into the kingdom of his son as priests and kings unto our God. So you are a changed person forever, somebody. You can know, you can hear, you can see. Before we were blind and deaf and dumb. We run for fear. We fear what does not happen. Yeah. Fear of the un- uh, unseen is the most fear that deludes human beings by the devil. Fear of the future. We are so much afraid, insecure. But now that we are in Christ Jesus, we are a new creature or a new species. A species that never existed before. God came into human and he lives within the mortal bodies of man. So the Bible says we have been translated into the kingdom of his dear son. Come on, let me help you understand, therefore. I'm talking about who you are and what you are. Your identity in Christ. Now, all this is interesting. Let me take you to the closing sequence. You now understand you are a child of God or believe you are a child of God. We agree together. You believe that the Holy Spirit lives inside you. Yes? Yes? So if the Holy Spirit lives inside you, which is the Spirit of Jesus Christ, it means that everything Jesus was and is, you are. Everything that Jesus will be, you are. But this is it. We are going through transformation. A boy born to be the king was born as a baby. Yet, the prophet can say this boy will be the ruler of this country. But yet, as a baby, can he rule? But the boy grows. He has to grow in a certain way. He has to know a certain things. He has to pass through a certain education for him to be king. Look at the prime minister. A prime minister is a good example. I love her so much. Don't worry about those who are talking against her. I don't worry about it. Anybody who rules, I love. Amen? If tomorrow Faraj becomes prime minister, I will still love him. 
<laughs> I don't care who is the prime minister, but I must love my prime minister. Hallelujah, somebody. The Bible says we should pray for the prime minister and all those who rule us. I obey God, full stop. I may not vote for you, but once the other people vote you in, I begin to serve you, and I pray for you. Hallelujah, somebody. Amen. Now listen to me. We were told that the prime minister said to her husband when they were in Oxford University that I will be the prime minister of this country someday. That's our choice. And the husband said, well, for me, I want to be a businessman, whatever the case may be. So when you intend down the street, I will be the husband of... <laughs> no, 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 I understand. <laughs> understand. But both of them have to go through a particular education, especially her. And when she left, she said this week, when she was contending her, you know, vote of confidence, that she sat as a counselor, then she served as an MP, then she said she served as cabinet ministers before she became a prime minister. If when she said, I will be the prime minister someday, and she chose to go and join World Bank, and sat all her life in World Bank, it would be a dream that would never come true. I would get that. So what I'm saying to you is this. You are God's children. The spirit of God lives in you. Help me with this. Everything that God is already has been given to you. He didn't take it from you. Then it means it's what you make with what you have. That's what determines what you are. Because what you do defines your identity. Let me help you with this. Now let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter, chapter 2 verse 9. I begin to show you. I say something to you. In, in CFT Church, I'm so happy with you guys. I'm happy with you because the Bible says, blessed are those who hear and do. And a lot of you hear and you do. Look at what it says here. However, it is written, no eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind has conceived what God has prepared for who? Let's read together. Listen to me. That scripture says, no eye, no ear, and no mind. Why? Should the Bible say, no eyes, no ear, and no mind? Number one, your eye, your set of eyes, and your ears are the connection point to your mind. What you see generate thoughts. What you hear generate thoughts in you. Do we agree with that? Yes, sir. So therefore, the first thing is this. No wonder some Christians have nightmares. Because dream is what went through your mind when you are sleeping. That is dream. The Bible says so. Read the book of Daniel, you find it. The book of Exodus, you just, uh, 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 Genesis, you just read about Joseph and the rest of it. So, if a Christian therefore understand for your spiritual growth, your eyes and your ear is the most important. What you hear, what you see determines what goes in your mind. You cannot function, a man cannot function above the capacity of his mind. I would gather now. Therefore, every thing of what you do is determined by your mind. A man kills because he decided to kill in his mind. A man goes to school because he decided to go to school in his mind. A man goes to business because he decided his mind to go to business. So what determine your second factor of identity, which is what you do, is your mind. God is about to reveal something to you. But God said, concerning you who is born again, there are some things your eyes ought to see. No man has seen it. There are some things your ears ought to hear. No man has heard it. All right? 
But for your mind to function, your eyes and your ears, your eyes need to see and your ears need to hear. And then your mind can conceive what God has prepared for those who what? love him. Hello? Yes, sir. You know, as you are going to the year of glory, I want to wind you up. There's no reason why you should not see vision once you are born again. Mm. There's no reason why you should not hear the audible voice of God once you are born again. Because what eyes have not seen, God prepared for you. Mm. Why should a Christian go to a prophet? Prophet, what is God saying to me? When God prepare your own eyes to see what he will never reveal to the prophet. Come on, understand that English. God said, what eyes have not seen, I prepare for you. So there are some things God will not reveal to any mortal man about you, except to you alone. We prophesy in part. We see in part. I am a prophet. Proven, 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 proven. Because the prophet that speaks and it comes to part, the word of God said he is a prophet of God. But I'm telling you, have I told you all things about your life? Impossible. Impossible. When you start... There is a testimony I've been sharing in, you know, I've been sharing, the, I shared it in, in, um, in, uh, in um, Berlin, and I think in New Christ about uh, Dickness, uh, Dickness, uh, mercy. <laughs> Hallelujah. I won't want to say it here because you are here, <laughs> so that you can share it fully, you know, on the watch night service. And I told them, the testimony of uh, Dickness, mercy, happen, I said, there is no, it's not strange to me that God did that to her. I said she attends every meeting. So I don't need to pray over her when she came to me about, you know, decision of things that should happen to her. I only spoke. It happened instantly. I don't need to pray. Because her works go before her. I will, I will show you in a minute. If God has something prepared for your eyes to see, and you cannot see. That is what we are dealing with this morning. Why should I, your father, spiritual, start with a man trying to convince him about God last week? And then something inside me spoke and said, tell him that the voting for your prime minister today, she will win by 200 votes. Excuse me, if I said that and it didn't happen, what do you think the man will say? He will, he will have every right to say, this is what we are saying about all oh, you this so-called, 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 and so-called. Where did I have the gods to tell him that God said the prime minister will win with 200 votes tonight? Why they were saying in television that she could have 176? Listen to me. Why, why should I have such boldness? How did I know that what I'm hearing is God? <laughs> eh? That is God. When I stood before you in January and I was standing there and I was just talking and the choir were passing behind me like, you, you watch that, you watch it again next Sunday. And I was telling you that this is what will happen in England this year. This is what will happen in the U.S. this year. This is what will happen at this time. What the decision of Trump to move capital of Jerusalem, of Israel to Jerusalem and announce it. The decision of Trump to withdraw from this your Kyoto Convention and all this world organization, pull it down. I told you, division in conservative party that will emerge. I told you, it happened last week. Did I not? Come on now, did I not? Did you not hear it? It's still there. The earthquake in, um, uh, what do you call it, um, that, that started the year in uh, uh, Hawaii. When the Lord showed me that magma was walking on the streets, which you have never seen. And it happened in Abu Hawaii. And what will happen eventually to all this couple in England, I told you. 
Now, now, you know when I was speaking, I was just speaking like this. I did not shake and say, thus, thus say yet the spirit of the living God. So that you may know that I am a prophet of God. <laughs> Hallelujah, somebody. I was just talking, talking to you, and then something else was speaking to me. The one who spoke to me, I have no control over him. It is not because of my intelligence that he spoke, but my submission. Help me. Let me say this to you, therefore. If the Bible says, eyes have not seen something, ears have not heard something, mind has not imagined something, but that thing is yours. I think everyone should decide today that we're going to work it out. And we're going to work it out. My career is a minister of God. Huh? I'm a professional <laughs> man of God. Amen? You have various careers. God help you out. But in my own career as a minister of God, a competent minister of God is a man that can hear the God that sent the minister and tell the people what that God is saying. And I pass. Yes, I pass, so. Yes, sir. <laughs> I pass, so. Yes, sir. Oh, boy. I pass, so. Yes, sir. I'm not the minister who is eloquent in exegesis. A juggernaut. <laughs> oh my, my. It's not by eloquent speeches that the lame walk. Or not by juggernauty that the dead are raised. <laughs> okay? By your ingenuity, you cannot see tomorrow. So for me as a child of God and as a messenger of this age, I have to look at this scripture and I have to follow it. If you follow it, it will work for you. Amen. Hello? What is the underlying factor for revelation of this? Those who love God. That's all. Your love for God. That's all. I want to see is for those who love God. I want to hear is for those who love God. How much do you love him determine how much you can see? How much you love him determine how much you can hear? God was passing by Abraham to go to another country to, to execute judgment. He said, how shall we hide from our friend? How can your God call you a friend? Can the Lord appear to you today and call you a friend? Oh, I love the Lord. How many times this year have you been in the prayer in the midweek? Oh, I love the Lord. The Bible study throughout this month, this year, how many times do you attend it? I love the Lord. Apostle gave you from January Bible verses to read in the morning, three and three in the evening. We read the Bible truth two and a half times. We are going to the third time finishing now. This same year, if you have been in CFT from January, you'll have read Bible truth at least two and a half times. Someone says, I love the Lord, and you are part of them, and it looks like German to you. You have never done it. Oh, I love the Lord. I love him. As someone say, I love him. Whatever you love. <laughs> Hallelujah. In the household of faith, you contribute nothing. Then come, say prayer, I say amen, we go home. Let me tell you, every business you have, every knowledge of academics you have, the day you die, they are gone. Really, you don't know who will inherit you. You may write a will. There are some people who say, we see how they will do that will here. Isn't it? And gone are you. Now, what will remain with you where you're going? What did you do in my household, God will ask you. I come quickly, and my reward is with me, to give unto everyone according to what he has done in the household of God. And yet, someone is saying that, God, I want to see vision. I want to see trance. To see it, if God gave it to you, what will, where will you use it? Is it the house of God that you do not attend? Does God equip people for no reason? How we need to ask ourselves, if you're a boss in your office, you promote those who are trans to manager. 
because you are the director, and people who just come whenever they like it, you promote them to become manager. I, I, I'm sure that you know what will end your business. So is God. It says, turn unto me first, and I will what? So the degree of your turn to God determines how much God will turn to you. Listen to me. I have people, I've met people who continue to shout in meetings, they will cry. Oh God, you must answer me today. You surely must answer me. And they begin to sing, today, 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 today. Jesus must answer me today, today. Everybody, today, today. And they are, they are sweating. You must answer me. Ask them, where were they last week? In church, they did nothing. On the streets, they were nothing. They never shared the gospel with anybody. That's why God allowed them to cry, shed their tears, and they go from bad to worse. Satan will be saying to God that, let me deal with this mouth he's using to speak. A reckless man who claims to be born again, a man who does not love God, a man who is selfish. Let me deal with him, the devil will be saying. Love is two ways. What you give into love is what you get from love. I might say something to somebody. What you don't give to love, you cannot get it. So if you are a good steward of, of, of mine, I traveled and you took care of my, my inheritance, and then my inheritance became so massive. When I come back, what do I do? I compensate you. You will not demand it. Even if you don't want it, I will beg you, please take it. You have done so much for me. So is God. You know, I'm going to teach you next Sunday about this. this we have done it. I'll teach you more. Deception in the last days. You know, Jesus said in 24th chapter of Matthew, he said, the love of many will wax cold. It is my business, Lord. It is my work, Lord. It is my school, Lord. Hello? And God will say to them that, well, if you don't have time for me, that's why I cannot have time for you. If it is your school, let the school do what God should do. If it is your work, let your work do what God should do. Because when you give time to your work, you got benefit of work. You give time to school, you got benefit of school. If you rob God with all the things that God has given you, and so you are not available, let everybody to do the same thing. Who will be in the temple of the Lord? You imagine it. Hello? So, your eyes to see, your ears to hear, and your mind to conceive Underlining factor, for those who love God, how much do you love him? How much? I want to provoke you before I stop. Do you believe the Bible is true? Yes, sir. Even if you didn't answer me now, maybe you didn't know what you're saying. I said, Did you believe, do you believe the Bible is true? Yes, sir. Bible is not true because somebody said it's true. It's true because it is true. I was studying, I'm writing a book now. Sometimes it's good to be. That book is called God's Jurisprudence. When I studied the field of laws, and as a minister of God, I know that laws came from the Bible. But when I studied the field of laws, I decided now to go and investigate scholastically the origin of law. So I began to write on God's jurisprudence. When we are reading the book of Genesis to Deuteronomy, are you not shocked? Are you not shocked? Every aspect of law is in Deuteronomy. Banking law is there. I did it. And I saw it there. The laws of interest is there. Estate law is there. Land law is there. The laws of boundaries and demarcation is there. Criminal law is there, even the law of murder. Malice are for thought, basis of murder. Definition, legal definition of stealing is in the book, in the Bible. In Genesis, in a, a, a Deuteronomy. The legal definition of stealing. All the prerequisites for conviction is there. It's what the Bible says. You cannot convict a man unless he has done this. Listen to me. But you see, if I don't turn my heart to gain that knowledge, I won't get it. I won't get it. 
What will he do? Knowledge is power. It liberates humanity. Whatever you turn your heart to is what you get. Therefore, what God is saying. God wants you and I to turn our full attention to him and turn away from all these things of this world. <laughs> it's like the story of a boy. The father wants to give him money. He has coins in his hand. He has notes in his hand. The boy looks for coins because he can play with coins. Isn't it? The dad said, take the notes. It's much money. He said, no, no. Give me the coins. That's the case of many of us. But listen to me. It will change now. Amen. It will change now. Amen. I have 10 more minutes, isn't it? All right. Let me roll you down. So, no eye has seen, every Christian can see. No ear has heard, no man has conceived what God has prepared for those who love him. So, if you are a Christian, God has prepared your eyes to see, your ear to hear, your mind to know. Right? The last few days now we have to work it out. Nothing should happen to you unawares. Are we together now? Yes, let me help you say, let me say this to the, you, know, you, uh, you people here in cathedral, because I give two analyses in New Cross that I want to help. I believe that God is, is going to apply that to some of you. Do you know that I've said this to you in this church? God, the Lord sat me down one day and told me, when I was teaching you about the most powerful weapon of Satan is time wasting. You remember? And that's the most powerful weapon of Satan, to waste human time. Uh, because the time you waste today, you will never regain it till you die. If you are supposed to go to school last year and you didn't go, you cannot go back last year and go. It's another year you will go it. Do you get me now? And I told you this. The Lord told me, why do you think of what you cannot solve? That is why you cannot solve what you can when you give your mind to be thinking about the things that you can't solve, okay, then you cannot get revelation from God concerning what you can solve because your mind is just one volume. It's saturated with thoughts that are irrelevant. Listen to me, therefore I say this to you. Understand that issues that that a man has that will make you be thinking are issues that come from what you saw or what someone said. And that can send you thinking and waste hours of your life thinking about what at the end of it you have no result. Okay? And I say this therefore, get rid of all those things in your mind so that you can concentrate on things. I will finish this and as I'm telling the people. You can concentrate on things that God can use to profit your life because there are many things God wants to reveal to you. Give an example. If you are in this house and you are a young boy or you are a young woman and someone comes to you and says that God showed me that you are my wife, don't run into it. Because if God showed him you are the one that want to marry. If God did not show you, God did not show anybody. Someone says hey, that all your mates are getting married. Look at you. Tell them, if you can go to Oxford Street and get me one, <laughs> buy one, get one free, I will marry. Yes. Because you see, there are people in the church of God that they are in and out. They are in in the spirit and so, suddenly they are out on the spirit used by the devil to speak into your ear because the devil wants to have access to your mind. The age you marry is irrelevant in life. It is who you marry. Mm. Those of us who are pastors will tell you. I would get that. My son told me two days ago, no, 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 it's my, my sister-in-law was speaking to my son. And, you know, he said to my son that uh, God will give you a woman like your mother, uh, 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 yeah, a woman like your mother. He said because your mother and your father 
He said they are just the best fit in life. He said your father married his bone. And he said, you know, because she was very young when I met my wife. She said we grew to know them. I was telling my son that, you know, it, and she spent a lot of time with us. Whenever she's around my wife and I, she's always laughing. She's always laughing, you know. She said, your father has a happy home. He said, I pray for you. My son said, amen. Then she now went further as normal. Next year, my son said, no. <laughs> yes. Not next year. He said, why? I have other things to do before I think about that. If someone says to you that your mates are marrying, what about you? Tell them they should go to Oxford Street, buy one, get one free. Look, some people graduated at the age of 19. Some graduated at the age of 32. Some people started business at a very young age because they inherited money. Some started business at the age of 60. Kentucky Fried Chicken was 60 when he started business. This is Kentucky Fried Chicken. He resigned from a profession and then he went into it. And there are many like that. Do not allow people to lay eggs in your ear as to disturb your spiritual mind because you'll be frustrated by the devil. Ah, you have been married. So when will you have child? If God says you don't have child, is that a problem? Those who have child, what is better? What is better? When you don't have child, you want a child. When you have child, you soon know that all of them will leave you. Oh, yes, ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Then they, you go back to square one. To have children on earth is just to, to serve some people with your money. <laughs> that is to have children on earth. Say something. It is a problem, but it's a good problem. Are we together? So if you have children, all your labor in life, all the time that you should be working, you are very strong and working hard and working hard, it is for them to be eating it. And when you now, they have used all your labor time. One will say to you that, uh, Daddy, I want to say, I want to marry some, this person. The other one will come and say, Daddy, I want to marry this person. And before you know it, they are all gone. And when they are all gone, only those of them who are conscientious look back. You go back to square one. So if God has not given you a child, you are free. <laughs> Spend your money and enjoy your life. Don't let anyone tell you that. When will you have a child? When will you have a child? If they ask you that, tell them to go to Defoe Market and buy one for you. If that is how a child is being born. You know what I'm saying to you? Do not allow anybody to inject your mind with poison that does not exist. God, once you are born again, let me say this to you. Anything you don't have, if you are committed to God, anything you don't have is what God didn't want you to have. Not every Christian will be a millionaire. If you have a, a nation where everybody is a millionaire, it's a useless nation. Somebody must serve. Yes. And somebody must have. Somebody must have abundance to employ others. And as that generation is going, another generation is arising. That is how God cycled, recycled the world. So someone says to you that, as a born again, you must be rich. Nonsense. I will teach you next Sunday, you will know. No, 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 no. Not everybody will be extremely rich. You must have enough. If you work in godliness, you will have enough for your life. And if God be, he blesses you if you obey the principles of riches. You don't, you don't get rich by faith. You get rich by work. Paul said, show me your faith and I will show you my work. He said, I work with my hand. I am a lawyer, Paul said, but I also am a tent maker. When Lord did not prosper me because I was working about I went to do tent making. And he says, I labor with my hand. Someone says that you are called to full time, full time, full time. A, a minister of God should not work. Who told you that? Paul said you should work. Hello? Yes, sir. An apostle worked too. Yes. Hello? Hallelujah. <laughs> uh, yes, 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 yes. All these things I'm reading, 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 reading. Next year is my payday. Amen. Amen. Are we together now? Yes, sir. Because you need more money to help people, to help yourself, to help the work. 
So therefore, don't let anybody tell you what you do not have is a curse. No? What you don't have, you don't have. It's better for you not to be married than to be married and then for three years, the marriage is in the drain. All of you who are born and raised in my hand, you have had me. When people, when you are talking about marriage, you pray, God speak to you. You don't go and just speak something because it looks straight and slim. Because it may be bent in few time, few, few, few years. You ask God, you see yourself. Not people see for you. My children, I don't see for them. When it comes to marriage, I'll tell you the one that Pastor Elizabeth is married now. Pastor Elizabeth, I told her from her credo, man is not your problem. God is your problem. Face God and career. Forget about man. She obeyed me. She obeyed me. What has her ear not heard from ignorance? And my ears heard it too. Even face to face when they talk to her. It is on a married day I will talk about her. So that everybody will be there. What has my ear not heard? Some have said before, face to face to my daughter, everybody is marrying. You will never have a husband to marry. Yes, yes, and I can mention their names now. Yes, you don't know what people go through. I know them, I heard them, and I can mention their names, and I will. To CNN. <laughs> Because I'm a lawyer now, that is tantamount to... <laughs> I would together now. That, she passed through that. But however, this is the basic case. At the age of 21, when she has not gone into any relationship, God revealed to her her husband and the tribe the man will come from. From the age of 21 to the age of the 32, about 11 men or so have been coming to her. Among them, pastor. They are qualified men. You know, when somebody is well read, usually people don't come to you. As a woman, if you are well read, the people who wear two left shoes, they won't come to near your door. <laughs> oh, yes. When each one of them comes, I tell my daughter, have you prayed? Regardless of the fact that God had given the statistics, when she told me where, where the tribe is, she doesn't know the name. I, I told her the very city where the man will come from, at 21. So each one that have come, none of them come from that city. So when they come, that's my own first vetting. I said, go and pray. She will come back to me, a vision, God will give her vision, clean, clear. And she will say, Daddy, that is not the person. This is what I saw. I said, you got to try. Because when a, a, an ego gives birth to a child, when that child is being under the ego, the ego will take the children and flap them out so that they can learn how to fly. fly. Second came, the same thing. Third came, there is one that almost won, if by fire, by force, but he's not. God revealed to her about him. Until the person now, two and a half years ago, they met. When they brought that person, somebody in this church at that time simultaneously brought a photograph of her brother. They had compassion that you must marry my brother. And my daughter would say to them that I'm not too old to be married. Okay? When they were talking about that among themselves, trying to kill and slaughter it, I overheard from my wife, what's going on here? I said, there's somebody's photograph. When they showed me, I said, no, this is not the person. By the Spirit of the Lord. And then, the person that she's married now showed up. When they put the photograph together, they brought the photograph together. When I said, give me the second photograph, they brought the photograph. I said, this is the man. I saw him about seven years ago. The seven years ago, what happened was that somebody approached her who is close to us, who by virtue of natural would have said, oh, that's a good relationship. But God showed her it's not. So when she told me, as she was walking away, I saw her husband brought before my eyes. And I said, come back. All these years I've been praying for you. But today, look at your husband standing. When I see him anywhere, I will grab him and tell him that you are the husband of my daughter. I saw you. And my daughter was looking at me. 
<laughs> if, if I was your father, what do you think would happen to you? <laughs> Sometimes they understand me, sometimes they don't understand me, but they just obey and follow me anyway. So I said, so when this photograph came, I said, this is the man I saw. He must come from this town, and it is. This is the tribe he comes from, and it is. I said, the other photograph, see it, and I don't want to hear anybody. If anybody worry you over that one, tell them to phone me. <laughs> and every communication froze. When I went to Nigeria, I met him first. The, I was preaching when he walked in. I said, that is my husband, my wife's, my, my daughter's husband. Because I saw him. Now, why will God delay you? Because God wants to season you. In her work as a minister, she has affected many lives. Raised many young ones. To glory. Celebrated them when they were. Celebrate their children. Your time will come. Yeah. Do you understand me? Don't let those who talk with instincts derail your spirituality. And this is just one. I'm saying this in terms of every aspect of life. Let me read this scripture finish. Tell someone today, not today. can tell me the plans of God for you next year? No one. You might have struggled for years, all right, praying and serving faithfully, and your ears might have been full of ignorance who speak out of instinct. Discouraging. Maybe next year is your turn. But let me say this to you. If you can be faithful, your time will come. If you can be faithful, your time will come. And that's how I want to read the rest of scripture. It talks about instinct and spirituality. Look at verse 10. It says, but God has revealed it to us by his what? Spirit. What eyes have not seen? What ears have not heard? What has not entered into any mind? God has revealed it by his spirit. And it says, the spirit, look at capital letters, searches all things, even the deep things of God. And you have that spirit inside you. You have that spirit that search all things, deep things of God. The spirit that search deep things of God. Can you imagine? As you are sitting on this chair here, that spirit is inside you. You go to your house, it's with you there. He does not leave you. That's why I find it hard when someone goes to a prophet and says, what is God saying? You carry God in you. And you are going to an empty prophet who is a, who is a womanizer somewhere. You haven't seen it. The person who just behaves as if he has something when he does, well, he has something, the devil he has. Yes. And you carry the God in you who searches all the deep things of God. You are going to a wayward, a useless man to come and tell you a future. That's why they mislead you. That's why they misguide you because what you hear determines what you think. They demean you and make you nothing to yourself. Listen to me. You are more than what you ever think. The next verse says in verse 11, For who among men knows the thought of a man except man's spirit within him? In the same way, no man, no one knows the thoughts of God except what? The spirit of the living God inside you. Therefore, if no one knows the thoughts of God except the spirit of God that lives in you, it means you can know. Uh, come on now. Am I saying something? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The thoughts of God can be known by the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit lives inside you. What Paul is saying is straightforward prima facie. In other words, you can know the thoughts of God in every situation of your life. You can know. You can know it. That's why you can't let someone push you. Anyhow. Okay? Look at what it says here. The next verse 12. We have not received the spirit, small letter spirit, which is your own human spirit is speaking about. The spirit of the world, but capital letter spirit. If a man is in Christ Jesus, a new creation, your spirit overtaken by the, this spirit. 
All right? That is from God. That we may understand what God has what? Freely given. So the purpose of Holy Spirit is for you to understand what God has freely given. What has freely given? Deuteronomy 29, 29. Hidden things belong to God. Things revealed belong to us and to our children. There is nothing about your life, your children. I don't know. Look, those of you who are young, young parents, I've laid a, uh, you know, a legacy for you. Before you, co- you conceive, pray and know the child that you are going to conceive. That's how I know them. So that before they are born, you know who they are, what sex they are going to be, what is their destiny. And so when they are growing up, you can insist on them and tell them, this is your destiny, you cannot do something different. Because everything God had freely given you can be revealed by the Holy Spirit that lives in you. Everything God has freely given you. But understand, revelation comes by your love for him. Those who love him. Look at this now. No, go back to that verse. So, the purpose of the Holy Spirit is for you and I to understand the thinking of God for us. We settle that. Yes? Do you agree with that? Say amen. amen. Look at the next verse, therefore. We are finishing in verse 16. It says, This is what we speak, not in words taught by us, taught us by human wisdom, but in words taught by the Spirit, expressing spiritual truth in spiritual words. I'm coming back to verse 12 eventually, but go to verse 14. The man without the spirit does not accept the things that come from the spirit of God. Can you understand that? For they are foolishness to him, and he cannot understand them because they are what? Spiritually discerned. Discerned. Come on now, listen to me. There are people in the church who are sick carnal. Paul says, they are the one who talk by instincts to kill what you should, what you should, you know, what God is saying or what God has ordained for you. But the only way to overthrow them is to be spiritual in your discernment. Someone says something to me, does the Bible say so? No. He may be convinced by what he said, but is that what the Bible says about me? No, forget it. It's a lie. It's a lie of the devil. You know, anything built on falsehood, we fail. And end up in regret. Listen to me. Listen to me. You must apply discernment, which is the word of God, to every thought of your mind, to everything you see, to everything you hear, before you decide. Enough of people going to church and regretting their decision all the time. Why should you? Why should you take decision to regret? When God lives in you, who knows all things? Because you abandon him at home, you are looking for him somewhere else where he is not. Where he is not. Listen to me. There are many places where you have leaders, Christian leaders, who, you know, they are the only one anointed. It's not so here. How is it, Mina? People who will tell you, do all manners on gyms to make you feel that that anointing, you don't touch it, don't come near, don't come near, don't come near. Ha! Ah, there are millions under them wasting away. It's not so with you. The path I walk, you walk. The water I drink is your drink. The one I serve is your God. Whatever he is to me, he is to you. Whatever he can do through me, he can do through you. Listen to me. It's not, it's, this is not a place where you are told that, oh, you see, I have gotten this because I, I work for it. I had a minister say before, before that, I, I know what anointing costs me. It costs nothing. Anointing costs nothing. Freely you receive, freely give. You, if you hear a man say that, if you are in, this, in such meeting, carry your bag and baggage and run for your life. It is only Satan that costs you. Jesus doesn't cost you. He says God has freely given it to you. The Holy Spirit will it to you. My passion is to see you manifest these things. 
You can imagine we are going to the end of the year. Certainly God has been speaking to me from October, and you know it. Go and check your tips, and if you can recollect all that, you are writing it down. Things that will happen next year, I've been telling you from October. Okay? And I tell you in trans as the Holy Spirit speaks. And I'm sure that as we enter New Year, I will still tell you more. Especially Nigeria. I have said what God said to me about Nigeria is not subject to change. People don't have to believe it. When I told you that Obama was going to rule America twice, and the person who will rule after he will show America Pepe. Did people believe it? You don't believe it. The guy came and he's showing them what? Pepe. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look, let me help you understand before we pray. One thing I want to know today, you don't need any other thing after salvation because all you need has been given. That is the spirit of the living God. Second, what you hear, what you see, determines what becomes of you. Okay? That's the reason why I give you Bible to read in the morning, Bible to read in the night, so that your eyes see the Bible in the morning, your eyes see the Bible before you go to bed. That's why we have prayer here every day in CFT Church. Jesus says, can you not watch with me for an hour? Your building is open every day, 7 to 8. People come to pray, to pray, to pray. If you did not do one this year, see me tomorrow. Amen? I didn't hear me. <laughs> Uh, somebody want me to go back to Germany but before I go you will hear me listen to me <laughs> Bible school every day every week we do here uh, isn't it yes, sir. and we read Bible chapter by chapter verse by verse if you have not come to one this year this week is the new cross is coming here to join you this week is Jesus seminar where we want to look at nitty-gritty about that man, Jesus. He's my greatest sermon, most powerful that I can preach because he's my best friend who I know and who I can say. He also appeared unto me. If you don't want to come for anything, just come for the fact that my best friend is coming to be talking. We will dig down, dive deep into who Jesus is, which will form us for the new year. Listen to me, therefore. So you can't sit down and be saying that I didn't come, I didn't come. Now we decide you will come. All of us agree that we will come. Look at somebody's mouth, tell him we will come. We will come. Uh -huh. You know what I'm going to be doing? On Sundays now, just say, you, 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 you. This week, you will teach us on the Bible study of this week. And if you run, I will chase you. I know where you live. I will follow you to your house and come and give you. You, you, you will carry the microphone so that you know that it's so easy to be quoting the scriptures. And it's not very easy, you know. We must have God. We don't have any other thing. We must have God. And then he says, 15. The sand man, the spirit, the spiritual man makes judgment about all things, but he himself is not subject to any man's judgment. If you judge everything you hear by the word of God, you will never regret. That's what he's saying here. You will never be in any man's judgment. Let me say, when I was going to, to go into law, you remember? When I, I, I don't know, I make noise a lot. I announce it to everybody. The whole world had. You know why I announced it even on my TV program? Yeah, if everybody have had, how will I say I'm no more going? <laughs> are, are you with me? So I subject myself under my hearers. And you know, during my, during my school, I would tell pastors, Pastor Tayo to read my, my report every week. You know what that does for me? If the day that I go see, I told all of you now, is it it? Come on now, do you forget? And I say, we all have to pray, but I have to do the reading. Because if you pray, I don't read. It is no work. And then the following week, I got Easter, 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 Easter. And I read it to you. The reason is because I subject myself to your monitoring. Because if I have told you, if I didn't go, you will ask me. But that time, let me say this to you. Some people told me, Apostle, at this your age, you are going to go to, to, to university and sit down with people who are younger than your baby? Is that encouragement? I looked at them. I said in my heart, when I finish, I will come back to you. <laughs> Do I not sit down in church and my baby stand on this pulpit and teach me Bible? Come on now. Yes, sir. You've seen them preach here. 
Six year old. I put him there. He preached. And I wrote what I learned and I told you. In Bible school, they preach. Six, seven, eight. And I learn from them. And I tell people what I've learned from those children. How dare someone tell me that you are going for a good thing. I'm going to invest to do law for that matter. You, are, you think you will discourage me by telling me that we sit down. <laughs> Is the prime minister the oldest woman in this country? Come on now. So can you imagine that? And someone said to me that, you know, the older a man grows, the more his brain cells sleep. I said my own cell is awake. He's not sleeping because the Bible says in Joshua 1, 8, this book of the law will not depart from your head. Why did I not hear? When I say I'm going to book in a ah, two and a half hours drive every time you go, yes. What I'm saying to you is this. Every decision you make, you must discern it by the Spirit. Every relationship you get into, discern it by the Spirit. Anything you will act upon, check it by the Holy Spirit. Some of you have been wounded in the past because you were in a relationship in the past. You trusted the relationship. It could be a friend. It could be marital in intention. And you told all the secret of your life to that person. Only because of a little disagreement, a relationship broke. And before you know it, the secret of your life has become a broadcast by the person you trusted. It happened to some of you. you say, oh, if I had not known. It's because you trusted the relationship. All right? Okay, but you did not have discernment of the spirit that this person did not have equal trust that you have in the relationship. I would get that now. And you told all the secret of your life. Only for a little thing, they go. And you know when people like that broadcast it, they will add their own. Strange enough, many people must have, might have had their lies who didn't hear from you. And they are judging you by what they had. Then their behavior changes against you. Those ones who are ignoramus, they cannot discern information. At least a man is not found guilty until he's proven guilty. And a man cannot be proven guilty if he has not spoken. Now, some of you have been victims of this, isn't it? Come on, let me help you know this. You don't have to sit on that. Get out of it. Okay? If that is you. Don't let that downcast your mind. He that breaks the wall shall be stung by serpent, says the Lord. He will be stung by serpent. If anybody receives the secret of somebody else and you go about broadcasting it, the serpent will sting you. Even if you repent, you will still suffer. Those are laws of God that repentance don't stop the the consequence but it can mitigate the consequence you will still be will beaten by serpent because serpent is the devil that is what give devil opportunity to the lives of many because they don't understand the laws of god use the summons in every decision that you will make that verse 12 the verse verse 15 says verse 16 says we read it together for who has known the mind of the lord that shall we read it again How many people have the mind of Christ here with your hands to me? That's what you have. When you got born again, Jesus gave you his mind in exchange. Okay? I need a tall man here before we pray. They can come. Are you taller than me? Is he really taller than me? He is really taller than me. Let me look like someone like me. Brother, come. 
Ah, when you stood up, I was afraid because I thought you were short. <laughs> ah, you are taller than me too. Come on. <laughs> Is it Kentucky Fried Chicken that make you guys so? No. No? <laughs> Fish and chips? Some of that. Some of that. Okay. All right, now. He is, maybe, depending on the eyes with which you are looking, the perspective you are looking at, he looks like my height. Correct? Yes. All right, stand by him. So he looks taller. Let's assume that this man is now about nine foot tall, okay? And is double his width, all right? And this man is just this size. I want to show you something. When this man got born again, let's say this is Christ. This man got born again. What happened? He, God takes him from where he is and put him inside this man. If a man is in Christ Jesus. All right. But in this procedure, in God's sovereign power, though he is in here, but he is also autonomous. He is not bound. This man now is in him. Which means the mind of this man had to die or die gradually for this man to be able to do what this man would do because his mind instructs his action. And this man now, because he's now in him, has to behave like him. But he still has his human mind in him. So, sometime the mind of this man, which is Christ, will... Of course, it's in this man. He, the mind of Christ in him wants to operate, but the human mind cannot contain it. So the human mind of this man contend with the mind of Christ in him. Now, therefore, for this man to do exactly what this man would have done in his situation, he had to subdue his human mind to the mind of this man who is contentious. Are we together now? Yes. Are you getting me now? Yes. So, this man now, this is a mind that is strange. This is a mind he's used to. Now, this strange mind now is trying to stop many things that this mind does. But understand that this man belongs to this man. And that's the struggle that is going between you and Christ. So, Gradually, he begins to change. He wanted to do something, and this mind said, no, you can't now. He struggled and struggled and said, okay, Lord, I submit. He does it. He said, oh, if I had done what I wanted before, I would have regretted. Thank God for Jesus. He keeps on going another time. Something he was going to decide, he recognized that this mind is telling him that, no, you can't do it that way anymore. After I struggle, he said, yes, okay. He said, I will do it your way. What happens to him gradually is, he is being recorded gradually in his mental and mind to become like this man. It is when you get to a stage where you are very much like this man that you can now access the brain of this man and when, whatever he does, it will seem this is the man doing it. Because he had much of him. Okay? That is what Christians are going through. You know, anointing, I've told you, is equal. No anointing is more powerful. But our function differs. When the anointing come upon me, I will operate as in my office. Anointing come upon you, you will operate in your office. But I can ask for unction from God. You may call it anointing into functioning in other areas. And when God gives that to me, I function in the areas. But you and I have to become like Christ. And the verse 16 says, 
who had known the mind of the Lord, if we have educated ourselves in our human mind the Lord with the mind of Christ, we will get to a place whereby we speak on behalf of him, because that's what he will say. You can think like him. You can see like him. You can understand like him, because you have spent more time, you know, crucifying your own mind so that his own mind, you can satisfy him, and you will come to a place whereby, you know, if you ask him a question, you ask him the same thing they will say. And this is what this verse is talking about. Please take your seats. Who has known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? Okay? But we have the mind of Christ. You have the mind of Christ. But the procedure that you must follow to be able to operate it is what I've told you. So we're going to pray. And this very month, let me say this to you. God had told us in this house, your life next year will be revealed to you in this December. Amen. You will not enter December blind. What you should be, what God has prepared for you next year, in this December, they will be revealed unto you. So that when you enter New Year, you are entering a year with a direction. Are we together now? And this is what the scripture is saying. Let's stand up on our feet. We're going to pray. We're going to pray to the Lord. First thing we pray for is this very verse. You pray and tell the Lord, enable my mind to operate in the fullness of the mind of Christ. Crucify my human mind. Give me the power to subdue my human mind so that what I love to do is not what I would do, but I will do what God wants me to do. Lift up your voice and begin to pray. Who has known the mind of the Lord, I will instruct him. Tell the Lord, Father, empower my human mind to be submitted to the Holy Spirit. Let the Spirit of God override my human mind. Tell the Lord, let the Spirit of God override my human mind. Tell God anything in me that hinders the mind of Christ. Take it out of me. Help me to operate in the mind of Jesus Christ. Oh, sovereign Lord. for insights who has known the mind of the Lord it is those who have the mind of Christ now I begin to tell the Lord open my eyes to see open my ears to hear and my mind to conceive your plans for my life for next year 2019 the Bible says what eyes have not seen, God prepare for those who love him. Tell the Lord, I love you. Open my eyes. Open my ears. Open my mind. Help me to understand what you prepared for me for next year. Lord, help me to know. I don't want to enter the new year ignorance. Now tell the Lord. The Bible says the spiritual man makes judgment about all things. Pray and tell God, enable me to discern with the power of discernment. Do not let me be pushed around by human beings. Do not let circumstance uh, 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 cause my actions. I don't want to keep on doing things and regretting it. Tell the Lord to help you to be able to discern in all things. So that you can discern in everything. You don't want to take decisions that is not in line with God. You want to take decisions that is in line with God in everything that you do. So that people's will don't prevail over you any longer. Release yourself from the domination of, of people. 
free your soul from the negative influence of people around you. Tell the Lord, give me discernment of spirit. Let me operate in your discernment to the fullest. Father, we bless you. We glorify your holy name. In Jesus' anointed name we are prayed. Somebody say amen. amen. For who has known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? But you have the mind of Christ. Father, I pray for Christ with tabernacle. They listen to me all over the world. The mind of Christ in us. Father, let it come to full manifestation. The Bible said, what eyes have not seen, no ear has had, no mind has conceived what God has prepared for those who love him. I pray, Lord, for everyone that you brought to this family and everyone under my voice around the globe who profess the name of Jesus as we enter into the new year. Lord, restore us back to our, our first love in the name of Jesus. Help our heart to love you truly, Lord. Help our heart to obey you truly, Lord. Help our heart to serve you truly, Lord. You are looking for more peace on earth for next year, both in, the, in this nation and in other nations of the world. People who will speak on your behalf so that you can show yourself mighty. People who can speak on your behalf and the knowledge of your glory will fill the earth through them. I pray for all these people and all members of CFT globally. As we are approaching next year, let the unction come upon us. A love that does not demand, a love that always gives our full time, our body fully, our mind fully, our soul fully, a love that cannot be deceived by the devil. Let it come into our hearts. Transform our life completely by the power of your word. And I say unto you, the sight God has given to this house, begin to see by it. The ears God has given to this house, begin to hear by it. As I hear God and tell you things that will happen across the globe to time, and they do happen. As I see to the realm of the spirit, even to the paradise of God, he thought ever. And come and tell you the things I see and they are so. I say to you, receive the same sight in the name of Jesus. Receive the same hearing in the name of Jesus. Receive the same mind in the name of Jesus. Everything that contends with your mind, I command it to be destroyed in the name of Jesus as of Nazareth. As for me and my house, Christ faith tabernacle, the Lord shall we serve. Everything that contests with your human mind, I command them to be destroyed from their roots. As you are following the path of the Spirit, may the Lord empower your serpents. Father, we bless you. Anyone under my voice that is sick in their body, I cause the sickness to die. You are discharged from your infirmity. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Lord, people who have given requests before January, or by January rather, till this hour, who have been waiting, I say your waiting days are over. Your waiting days are over. As you leave my side, the Lord, you will encounter the Lord. The Lord will visit you. I say the Lord will visit you. If the Bible says it, which it did, that God has prepared every good thing for us, and he will reveal them by his spirit. I said, as you leave my presence, the spirit of the Lord will come upon you. The spirit of counsel will come upon you. The spirit of manifestation will come upon you. God will breathe over the word spoken of for your, to your lives. Every day remaining in December shall be full of manifestation. When we come here on the watch night service, your mouth shall be filled with testimonies. So shall it be and so it is. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. 
even in Jesus' anointed name. Somebody say amen. Somebody say amen. Put your hands together for the king of heaven. Hallelujah. Shall we take our seats, please? Before I, I sit down and Pastor David will take our offering,